In the 1970s, the Big Apple was rotten to the core. New York City in the middle of the 70s was a rough looking place. But amidst the ruins and squalor, a golden era of music was born. In downtown Manhattan, punk was created. In the midtown, disco was king. Whilst on the streets of the Bronx, hip-hop sprung up. Recorded in just two days, the Velvet Underground's debut album was far removed from the polished pop coming out of the Brill Building. But she never lost her head, even when she was given head. She says, hey, babe, take a walk on the wild side. Said, hey, they were young men who came from outside the, the island. Outside. In New York, and they could experience the sexual freedoms they craved and become everybody's darling. We threw things, we turned back buses, our drag queens, they jumped up on down, police cars. On, it, it, it amazed people. Awesome. Usually most of us were socially outcast. You had uh, uh, socially different backgrounds. The time I saw a DJ who was not just playing records, but creating atmosphere. A whole lot of soda. The idea that you could have one turntable and just mix the next record was unbelievable. But the records don't stop. So that was the first thing. That was the first big innovation. And that was the foundation of, of this idea of just DJs. And it was called disco. Money, 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 money. I mean, we called ourselves New York Dolls, but um, I don't think we ever really expected to go anywhere besides New York. They were the first band that um, valued attitude above um, anything, that the, anything that was musical. <laughs> There was no existing house PA at the time. People used to bring in their, their own PA systems and set them up. The only band to emerge at CBGB who could truly claim to be from New York was the Ramones. For me, the Ramones kind of created a template of punk rock that would be known as punk rock. Punk as a musical idea would be truly realized later in another city across the Atlantic, but the word was first applied to bands playing at CBGB. What had been created downtown had eventually been assimilated in Midtown New York and served up to the world. And in 1977, Exactly the same thing would happen to disco, which had left its downtown roots far behind. The studio opened in 77, the end of 77, and the opening night was huge and fantastic. Studio 54 turned the all-inclusive, music-led ethos of the downtown club scene on its head, selling exclusivity to the privileged few. For millions of New Yorkers not fortunate enough to belong to the city's elite, the glamour of Studio 54 and the bohemian atmosphere of CBGB were a far cry from the reality of the streets. The South Bronx resembled a war zone. Buildings that hadn't been demolished were torched by insurance scamming landlords desperate to get out, and a citywide blackout in 77 served only to enhance the atmosphere of lawlessness. There was really nothing to do here. We only had like one movie theater, which was over there, which is deteriorated. We had one movie theater that came apart. We didn't have a lot of, like, a lot of opportunities to come out of, about us in the South Bronx. That's what it was. Old turntables, um, old record collections, hooking 
systems up into street poles for wiring, making art out of a wall and, and a spray can that happened to be left to the side, um, being able to dance on some cardboard. Well, basically, Cool Herc was the guy who got two turntables and a, and, a, and, a, and a system, came out in a big park, and he rocked the park, you know what I'm saying? We got our geniuses and people want to have the quest to become smarter and have opportunities to do great things. And the city was basically saying, no nigga, you're not gonna be anything more than just a, you know, a little slum, slum creature. And the minds and the spirits and the souls came up through hip hop, said, no, we wanna be bigger and better than that. Showing on TV, right? Instead of fighting, they go out there and dance each other to death, right? Which is better than going out there with a 30 30 and shooting somebody in the head, right? The gang culture started fading away to the hip hop um, culture. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> These days, New York is safe, clean, and rich. But the golden era of street music, of making something out of nothing, seems to have gone forever. Crazy lady living in a bag, eating out of garbage pails, used to be a fag hag, such a dance to tango, skip the life and dangle, was hooked on print to see the